Hello everyone, it's Matt M and welcome back to my channel. I make clinical laboratory science content videos every single week and if you are interested in that type of content then consider subscribing to my channel, ring that bell to get notified and let's get started. Senior year of college. Wow. Was it that fast? I don't know. Honestly, this felt like the most chill year of college because there's just an intersem, a couple subjects that you have to take for the first semester of fourth year, then internship. I only had to take two subjects. You can see them on the screen right now. First one is Community and Public Health Lecture and Laboratory. The hardest thing about this class is the laboratory part. The main requirement was an immersion. If you guys don't know what an immersion is, it's basically you trying to be invested in the culture. We surveyed a nearby community. We asked them what their needs are. This happened in a span of five days, okay? So don't be surprised that we did this in one day. We had one day where gave out free lectures on hygiene and sanitation and potable water. We also taught the kids on um, traditional Filipino games. We also had a day where we taught the moms how to cook vegetarian healthy meals for their kids so that the kids won't be afraid of eating vegetables. We also gave a day for the kids where the kids can have haircuts and there's also one part where we gave the moms facials. I guess it's hygiene but not really but we had a sponsor and then on the last day of our five-day immersion we had this medical mission and we had three physicians come over and diagnose and we also gave out free medicine so basically this was a five-day fully intense lectures and application and trying to be an advocate for better public health within the community it is such a big um, undertaking for a small class of students and as limited amount of time which is an inter-semester which is basically just two months but we got through it aside from the five-day immersion that we did we also did a special project let's just say that this specific family struck the hearts of majority of my classmates they had a little girl who unfortunately suffer from cerebral palsy and she has muscular dystrophy as well so our class ultimately made the decision of adopting this family so basically my my classmates donated clothing and food and medicine and we also asked for two of the physicians that we invited for the medical mission to look over this family so that they can help out and see what the family needs health-wise. It's heartwarming to see that we've made such an impact in this community in such a small amount of time. So the next subject is research one. It's basically you or your groupmates proposing a thesis idea. We have thought about different ideas that we want to do for our thesis proposal. One of them is using anato seeds as a stain. We also propose coconut water as diluent because coconut water is actually an isotonic solution and can be used to dilute red blood cells. Another idea that I just thought of right now is the accuracy of hemolyzed samples on tests. But what my thesis advisor found really interesting is about urinalysis reagent strips you know how a urinalysis reagent strip has a pad so you dip it in urine and then you put it on the analyzer or you read it manually in the Philippines like a common practice on smaller laboratories to promote cost effectiveness is cutting reagent strips into two I had this idea because I work in a physician laboratory on my semester break in that physician laboratory they actually cut reagent strips into two and then and we just use half to the testing and then they manually read their test and then I pitched it to my thesis advisor and he greenlit the idea it was very cost-effective for the three of us because we're the ones funding our own research my thesis advisor thought that it's a great idea because it's relevant to the smaller laboratories in the Philippines and there's no literature about it which comes down to the main problem of this research there is no literature about 
about it, what we ended up doing is we found this research about a machine reusing pipe tips and we just categorized cutting reagent strips into two as laboratory hacks and that's how we segued it into the idea that these are laboratory hacks that have to be tested and research before we actually start doing this practice in the laboratory. I will show you the subjects that I took. I will put it on the screen. So my first subject is Clinical Chemistry 3, Lecture and Laboratory. And we just talked mostly about hormones and TSH and the pituitary gland and adrenaline, testosterone and estrogen, estron, estradiol, mostly those things. I remember we only had one laboratory experiment. We only did TSH testing because we only had that analyzer and it only tested for TSH. On the rest of the laboratory activity we practice our clinical laboratory science skills because we had a simulation laboratory which is basically like skills lab so this was our preparation before we went to internship in urinalysis we did a manual urinalysis for fecalysis we had poop samples and then we would just grab a little bit of poop and then mix it with saline mix it with iodine put two cover slips read it on the microscope to see if there are parasites we also had a cbc machine we also had a chemistry machine we also had a draw station where the students would draw patients we used the syringe method we had the butterfly set up and then we also had the ETS set up and then after that we would give out results to the patients next subject is clinical hematology 2 and here we just learned about the coagulation cascade and the fibrinolytic pathway a lot of platelet tests nothing really notable that we did in the laboratory and lecture side. Next subject is laboratory management and in this class, 15% of the grade would be coming from the orientation exam which I still find unfair. We study the different management styles of different managers on how they can effectively manage a laboratory. I guess if we want to be lab managers or lab directors or chief medical technologists, a memorable final requirement for this class was when we made a diorama of a perfect lab. It was really hard to be honest. It's a good thing it's a group thing because I had to make so many miniature chair for this diorama. Too bad I don't have a picture to prove that this actually happened. Maybe it didn't happen. <laughs> so the next subject is seminar one. The final requirement was to make a seminar so you'd be grouped into teams and then what ended up being our topic is a seminar regarding lung cancer. So we divided our research into introduction of lung cancer and then we also talked about the routine testing that is commonly done to detect lung cancer and then the future of detecting lung cancers. So that was the entire seminar that we made so at the end of all that it was october 2018 and before we enter internship we had to take a pre-internship exam which is basically like a board exam before entering internship we had to study all the subjects that will be taken during the board exam and then we would be taking it in one day and then we had to pass it within three tries if you pass on the first try then you are able to choose which intern hospital you want to be in because our university is affiliated with six training hospitals if you pass on the second try you are also able to choose within the six training hospitals and if you pass on the third take then it will be a test of luck because it will be a draw lot I guess you still have a choice if you pass on the third take but your choices are limited because the people who pass on the third take would be asked to come together and then they would draw a number from a hat say I'm sorry could you say that again Siri is triggered anyways. So on the hat, there are numbers and if I draw five, I would be the fifth person to choose which hospital I'm allowed to be an intern on. During our time, there are only three people who pass on the first take. They're the gunners of our department. Unfortunately, I am not that smart. I passed on my second try though, which made me have second dibs. Ultimately choosing Adventist Medical Center Manila. Oh, actually, if you fail on the third take, you have to wait till the next season again before you can take the exam so hopefully you can pass on those three takes these are my subjects 
this is the time where we get to enroll the subject MLS internship which is 18 units so you really have to do well because your staff the people who will be precepting you will be grading you and then your professor who visits you once a month will also be grading you based on the written exams that we will be getting each month during my time we only had uh, roughly seven months of internship which was really frustrating because if you want to work in the US specifically on certain states like California then you are required to take one year internship and most students don't know this but you can actually just go up to your internship coordinator and then ask them if the school is offering a one-year internship program which I already know about because I've already asked my professor a thousand times before entering the internship program anyways in Adventist Medical Center Manila we actually only do eight hour shifts if you're an intern there are times where I need week off or a month off because if you have an immigrant visa you should be in the US every couple months what I did was I would make up the hours that I lost through 16 hour shifts so every week I would do 48 hours before I went to my major flight to the US or Guam and yeah that is how my internship went next subject is research 2 and to begin our seven week study bottle a of lab strip u11 plus your analysis reagent strips will be opened and each of the 100 pieces of whole reagent strips in bottle a will be cut into 200 one half strips by using scissors Bottle B will remain closed throughout the cutting period because the 100 pieces of whole reagent strips in Bottle B will serve as the control during testing. Testing will begin one week after Bottle A is first opened and cut. To simulate normal laboratory settings, both Bottle A and B will simultaneously be opened, exposed to light, and agitated for a period of 10 seconds, 15 times per day. This process will continue until the study is complete. Selection of samples and testing will occur once per week for a period of six weeks. Fifteen random midstream urine samples will be selected and obtained from Adventist Medical Center Manila Laboratory each week. Once the specimens are ready for testing, the researchers must label each specimen cup using a corresponding specimen ID number associated with that specimen. After the specimen has been transferred to a conical tube, that tube will be labeled with the same corresponding ID number. Before testing, deterioration will be measured by comparing the color of the one half strip to the color of the whole strip. Per sample, one whole and one one half strip will be simultaneously taken out of their respective bottles. Both strips will then be dipped back to back into the same conical tube for three seconds. The strips will then be removed and blotted on the tissue paper at the same time. Two researchers will then manually read and grade one strip each simultaneously according to the suggested time it takes for each parameter to develop its full color reaction. 60 seconds for each parameter except leukocyte esterase, which is read between 60 to 120 seconds. Each researcher will record their results on their respective grading sheets. The two researchers will alternate their jobs of reading the whole strips or half strips per week to reduce variation in results due to medtech error. The results will then be given to a statistician to evaluate the data. After doing our research, writing the paper was actually harder because me and my group mates had different work schedules, so we butt heads sometimes. You have to bear with it because it's part of the group dynamic. That's pretty much it. So on seminar 2, we actually went to a convention of students of medical laboratory science in the Philippines and then we attended a quiz B. It's not a very structured class in my opinion, but it is what it is. Since I extended my internship to a couple more months, I had to enroll residency. It's pretty much just like internship extension because I have to be enrolled in a school so that I could still be an intern in that hospital. So my internship started November 2017 and it ended December 2018. In my university, graduation season only happens every May. So I have to wait from December of 2018 
then till May of 2019 to formally walk into graduation. So after my internship and after post-internship exam, I still have a lot of time to kill while waiting for May 2019. So December 2018, I enrolled at Lemar Review Hub for the March board exam seasons. After my first review center, I re-enrolled myself this time on a different review center, Pioneer Educational Review Center. It's pretty much like College 2.0 where a lot of my classmates from college are there plus other universities. And then I took the board exam March of 2019 and luckily I passed. I remember this one time during our review for the board exam. Every Saturday there'd be church service on the nearby Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sometimes we were invited as a whole class to have a role in the service. We sang Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. That's why whenever I hear that song, it hits different because I always remember like board exam season and studying really hard. Other people praying for you to pass but you're doubting your own skills which is not a really good headspace to be in. Before we took the board exam, our university held a mock board exam. So we went back to our university and most of us failed to be honest and that was not a really pretty sight to see. I remember seeing my score and I'm like, I didn't even pass. I'm not even like mock board exam ready. So I was like really scared to take the board exam. So after our second day of the board exam, we also met up and did a prayer circle on this really beautiful backdrop of I think it's the Manila Post Office. That was a really amazing time where all the students just came together and gave all the burden to the Lord and whatever his plans are will be his will and not ours. I passed the board exam March 2019 and then I still have April before I actually walk for my formal graduations. So I'm like, why not take another exam? So I went in, I took 14 intensive days of reviewing for the ASCP exam, which is the international board exam for medical laboratory scientists. Luckily, April of 2019, I passed and ASCP was more of a silent win because I did not actually tell most of my friends in college that I'll be taking the ASCP. After seeing that, I was relieved and it felt like a validation of this whole journey of college that I have gone through. It was hard for sure, but you get through the hard things in life, not by skating by, but mostly through hard work and lots and lots of prayers. And then after that, I walked for graduation. Matt Joben CM RMT Cum Laude And if you would like to see more of this type of content clinical laboratory science content then consider subscribing to my channel give this video a thumbs up because it would really help my channel grow and comment down below if you have some more video content ideas that you would like me to do this has been Matt Joben M RMT MLS, ASCP, CLS, and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Oh, and don't forget to wash your hands.